You're watching Jimres, man. We're back into Satisfactory. This time we will be looking at how to make an optimal copper production setup. So last time we did an optimal iron early game iron setup, and you should definitely check out the previous episode if you kind of missed that. This time we'll be setting up some optimal copper production. So there is one thing I would like to show you before we set that up. And that is in this early stages of the game we really need to get power going efficiently and uh, while we can use these small ones the larger ones uh, do provide much more power now you can see we turned off many of the machines these are now yellow here and now you can see that this bar is going down uh, a lot quicker so by overproducing this electricity here we can make these ones burn slower very handy uh, we also want to set up the automatic production of biomass uh, solid biofuel because it's more efficient and to do that we've put a little piece of leaf here a little piece of wood here and as you probably can imagine these are going into constructors and they take 120 per minute so use the mark 2 where applicable and these one export by 300 so that will that's real fast and they all get sent into this thing which is producing solid biofuel it takes 120 per minute so that's why we have a mark 2 there and they just put it in this container and we can easily go into here and just fill up these machines Very handy indeed, and this is the first uh, factory I've made that looks acceptable. So we just boxed it in here, looks pretty nice, and now we can go and do some research. Because before we want to start our copper manufacturing, we want to unlock parts assembly. Because then we'll get access to copper sheets, which we will of course need in order to have a good um, balanced copper setup. So let's click that button. We can actually ride with that thing, but uh, that's not advisable before we have any way to um, get down without dying. Not surprisingly, we are going to base our efficient copper manufacturing facility out of the principle that we have a pure source. If this is not the case, you can simply combine two normal sources with a simple merger. Because now we have the 120 belts, so we can combine 260 sources into 120 uh, and we can, gain, we can gain the same effect. So either two normal sources or, like in uh, this case, we are using one pure source. So we're going to uh, put down this little miner here. When we check into this thing, it produces 120 copper ore per minute, which means, just like the optimal iron facility, we will need uh, four smelters. Alright, now we spawned some base structures here, and you can see I've turned the miner around in order to be able to drag the conveyor up, like, to these splitters. So that's something you may have to do. We have a Mark II belt going into each of these ones. And something that um, I think some of you had a little bit trouble with like last episode and that is the connection with the conveyor belt and the machine. They can be closed like this and you can't see the conveyor belt so you have to listen. And you saw those little sparks there. That means it connects up. So we are connecting each of these. And there we go, connected. Remember that you want to draw your electricity very, 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 very cleanly. Um, otherwise, it will become a mess very quickly. So we set up the electricity very cleanly and we're just about to connect it up to the main power line. The mains go here and we can connect it up right here. But now we got four smelters. We need to do some more math. Because if we spawn the constructor here, we can see what different parts we want. We want wires and we want copper sheets. So the copper sheets, they require 20 per minute. And the wires require 15 per minute. 
and the uh, source we get from this is 120. So we need to combine this in a good way in order to have, uh, well, full capacity. And one note, this is a little serious, so if you are missing anything uh, that doesn't seem like entirely clear or entirely explained, please check the previous video in the playlist, because the intention with this series is that each video will be shorter than the previous one, hopefully, because we'll be, be, we will be diving into more advanced stuff, so I will just assume you have seen the previous videos um, when making the next video, so that I don't have to explain everything uh, like two times in a row. Right, so we need to go into the machine, select copper ingots, Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. And the miner doesn't have to be set up, and now we produce ingots. Very nice. So, we had our little number there 120 divided by 30, yes. So now we have like divided by 15, okay, 8, and divided by 20, okay, 6. And you might see where I'm going with this 60 divided with, so 3. And divided by 15 equals 4. So, uh, to put it to you a little bit quickly, we'll need 4 machines that produce wires. And we'll need 3 machines that produce copper sheets. And if we do that, it will be perfectly balanced and uh, perfectly efficient. Half the production will go to making wires and the other half will go to making uh, copper sheets. So, let us expand this little working area and add the constructors like we did in the previous video. And there we go, we've set up the wire manufacturing. You can see here, we have one of the smelters going down and splitting up to two of them like that. And we of course need to set them up like that. And the one above are also set up for making wires. And then we have a lifter and a splitter there, and we put the splitters super close to the constructors just to get a smooth effect there, uh, just like we did over there. So check out the perfect iron manufacturing if you want to see the exact details on how I set this up here. And um, not surprisingly, it involves a foundation, vertical mood 2, one above, and that's the perfect distance. In any case, uh, as, as again, <laughs> it's a series, check out the previous one. So, now we will use the other two to set up an area to produce copper sheets. And uh, to do that, we will need to merge them before we split them, because two are going to have to turn into three. So, we'll set up the merger here, very close inside it just so that the line gets super 90 degrees straight, just how we like it. And now we can drag this down here to make it uh, split up by three. It would be a hassle making a three stacked, uh, like three three constructors high stacked. It, will, it would make a little bit of a mess, so we're going to make them like uh, three wide. Alright, now I'm going to show you a new way to set this thing up here. So we have a merger, we drag it down here, we have a line, just a mark one line because it is 60 ingots, 60 ingots, not mingots, per minute. And we can just draw the line just far like this, all the way there, just control to keep it straight. Now, how do we connect it up? Well, the thing is, I'm going to show you that you can actually put splitters just in front of the thing. And you remember this little green line telling us if we have a connection? I'll just dial him up there until you see the green line. And there is your connection. Just like that. Super handy. And then we of course need to go down here and connect them up. But that's another way you can line up splitters and mergers. So, quite useful. So, electricity is connected up too. We'll just need to set these up to produce copper sheets. And then we can just uh, remove this little protruding area there. That was excessive. And it's smooth and set up perfectly like that. Fantastic. We are now making copper sheets. Uh, we're making a total of, I think it's 30 per minute. Because half are 
source is doing that. But we'll need a lot of them in the future, so that's good. Now, we have two machines... No, four machines making copper wire. But two of these machines will actually use to make cables. Because there is one thing more to make. And that is, if we spawn a constructor here, that's cables. And cables, as you can see, require 60 wires per minute. Alright, so, how do we do that? Well, we need to use two of these, because one of these produce 30 wire per minute. So two of these machines will be dedicated and funneled up into producing um, cables. So we're going to merge two of them and uh, put them into the disk constructor in order for us to make, uh, well, cables. All right, now we can see I have merged the wires and put them down here. And they should exactly be exported in them at uh, 60 wires per minute. Very nice. So we need to do cables as well. And I've set up this uh, belt here down below, merged them. And I've uh, seen that we can exactly fit another constructor here. Kind of extremely narrow. Sometimes it's just uh, a little bit too tight. And then we'll have to move stuff around until we actually can fit it. I think this is probably the maximum narrowness. Like that, very nice. Now we can see um, I've moved all the containers and we come into a problem here. So I can place them on the edge here and now I can hold control and it will automatically align with a machine like this. Make sure it's uh, pointing in the right direction like that. And there we go. Isn't that kind of handy? So now we can even set it up to be lining up with this thing and we can get them all um, in the right area where they actually might not actually be able to be uh, placeable otherwise. It doesn't matter if a belt looks like it's connected, it has to be connected completely for it to actually work. So make sure that uh, you did connect up stuff because it might look like things are connected and again, it doesn't mean that it is connected. Good tip. Alright, now we're producing wires too. And we're putting everything into containers. So, ladies and gentlemen. In the beautiful summer rain. We are here with a finished, 100% efficient, early game copper factory from one pure node or possibly two medium or normal I mean so I hope you did indeed enjoy this little video tutorial and do stay tuned for future tutorials we'll be going through the entire game in this tutorial style thing that goes from the bottom and shows you everything you have to know if you want to know some basic game tips of course check out the first video in this series, link in the description. In any case, let's make some copper and let us also put some containers on the iron area. But I'll do that off screen. I'll see you next time, probably for some really good setup of concrete production. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. You have been watching Gmodism. And I'm signing out. Like the video. Thanks for watching.